Hello YouTube. So what happened to the monkeys that Soviet scientists settled on a deserted island? Some unique and most importantly successful scientific experiments were conducted in the Soviet Union. Many scientists were high quality researchers. You can see some of their work in my videos. Their lives for the most part were not serene and carefree, far from that. So a striking example of such research is the placement of monkeys who lived in a zoo on one of the uninhabited islands of the Pskov region in Russia. Despite the fact that the animals could have died, the researchers decided to take this risky step. As Leonid Fyrsov wrote in his book The Behavior of Anthropoids in Natural Conditions in 1972, the Pavlova in Soviet Institute of Physiology and the Yerkes Primatological Center of the United States almost simultaneously and independently of each other undertook an experiment on the landing of young anthropoids, chimpanzees, which at that time were not even a year old, in conditions close to natural. It is not worthy that the Americans' idea ended in failure. Both monkeys placed on a deserted island in the warm weather state of Georgia died. This fact did not stop the domestic Soviet researchers. Moreover, as Fiersov noted, the death of American primates was due to a coincidence of circumstances. Meanwhile, Soviet chimpanzees found themselves in harsher conditions compared to American ones. The inhabitants of the Leningrad Zoo were landed on a deserted island of the Pskov region. The monkeys had to face many difficulties, from a relatively harsh climate to independent foraging. After all, there could be poisonous specimens among the plants. Why did Russian scientists decide to take such a risk? According to Vasily Peskov in his book The Complete Works, Volume 12, Keys to the Volga, the first question that faced the researchers was this. Will the monkeys from the zoo survive in natural conditions? The answer was found almost immediately. While the observers themselves were suffering in their camp from runny nose, sciatica and other diseases, the chimpanzees healed all the scratches they had in four to five days on the island and thrived. Fiersov associated this fact with exposure to fresh air, movements, and abundance of plant food. By the way, things were even easier with food. Experts fearing poisoning took food for pets with them, but they soon abandoned the usual food in favor of what grew and lived on the islands. Monkeys ate snails and ants. The late latter animals were fished out with a stick soaked in saliva, which of course no one taught the monkeys how to use. They figured it out on their own. The former residents of the Leningrad Zoo also ate berries, raspberries, strawberries, rowan, rose hips. Moreover, the chimpanzees stubbornly avoided poisonous berries and mushrooms. This circumstance has forever remained a mystery to scientists. Many things are. Anyway, how did the monkeys know? what were good, what were poisonous. However, the fears of the staff of the Institute of Physiology turned out to be in vain. The monkeys quickly settled on the island and felt great. Therefore, it is not surprising that Leonid Fiersov, together with his colleagues, continued this unique experiment. According to the authors of the publication, Formation of Animal Behavior in Norman Pathology, Chimpanzees have been planted on the islands of the Pskov region more than once. This series of experiments lasted until 1986. The scientists investigated aspects of the physiology and behavior of, the, of their wards, the ability to solve various tasks. Previously, many of these issues were studied exclusively in the laboratory. Work with the islanders was interrupted due to a denunciation written by one of the graduate students on Leonid Fiersov. 
This was the reality of mature Soviet socialism, informants and denunciations. But lately I start seeing similarities in what is taking place in the Western countries too. Freedom is so easy to lose and so hard to gain. Anyway, Fyrsov was dismissed from the institute and deprived of the opportunity to continue his long-term observations. He was cancelled, so to say. Subsequently, Leonid Mikhailovich Fyrsov, who still did not want to be satisfied with laboratory research, nevertheless resumed the Monkey Island program. From 1994 to 2004, he released chimpanzees for a month on an island located in the Leningrad Park of Culture and Recreation. According to Vasily Peskov, the results of Fyrsov's experiments can also be applied to humans. So at an early age, everything is much easier for people than when the train has already departed, as we say, meaning much later in life. Okay? But something interesting took place in 2011. So let's look at some other developments. We're speaking about strange ritual behavior in chimpanzees. The chimpanzee approaches a thick tree, grabs a stone from the ground and forcefully throws it into the trunk, either into its crevice or between the roots. The monkey accompanies his throw with a loud prolonged cry as well as other signs of extreme excitement. He stands on his hind legs, waves his forelimbs and his fur stands on end. Then the animal comes down and moves on. Its behavior is repeated by other individuals and over time a pile of stones accumulates inside the trunk of the tree or at its foot. These observations were the result of a large-scale study of the behavior of our closest relatives from the animal world, for which scientists created an entire international project, and journalists hastened to decorate their articles with loud headlines, linking the unusual behavior of monkeys with previously unknown religious ritual and the origin of religion and great apes. The use of tools by different primate species is far from new. With the help of sticks, chimpanzees get insect larvae for themselves, dig in ant hills and termite mounds. Some species of monkeys, like the same chimpanzees or crab eating macaques or black striped capuchins, they use stones to split prey with a hard shell. They put nuts or crabs on the anvil, so to say, and hit them with another stone. Not a rock. The use of objects can also be associated with protection. Monkeys can throw stones and sticks at the enemy. There are observations when a female chimpanzee threw a stone in the direction of a male to attract attention to herself. Having caused his irritation, the female approached him and the matter ended with mating. All these examples are explicable and um, Understandable, they are related to foraging, reproduction or protection and have been known for a long time. The behavior described above was first recorded in 2011 using video cameras that were located at 34 sites in West and Central Africa in the habitats of the subspecies of the common chimpanzee, Panthroglotite verus. The research project was named Pan-African Program, the Cultured Chimpanzee and the Incomprehensible Behavior of Monkeys was called Cumulative Stone Throwing. Of the 34 sites it was observed at 4, which includes, excludes the facts of randomness, and 64 such acts of throwing were recorded in total, over 17 months of research. As the authors of the article in the journal Scientific Reports write, adult males most often threw stones, just accompanying the ritual with characteristic aggressive elements of behavior, but also, albeit in small numbers, both females and adolescents were noticed behind this case. It also turned out that the frequency of throwing stones or rocks at trees is not related to the number of hollow trees in this area of the forest. In the article, scientists call this behavior a ritual, but they do not put any religious overtones in this word at all. The ritual in this case suggests that certain places are associated with it, and there is no obvious benefit from throwing stones or rocks at tree trunks. So why do all these chimpanzees throw stones at trees? There is no exact answer to this yet. 
There are only hypotheses, and of course the scientists cannot at all assume religious explanations, so this doesn't go in. For example, there is an opinion that the impact of a stone on a tree accompanied by a loud cry or shout can have a defensive value and scare of predators. However, the sound of the stone hitting is not that loud. Other researchers suggest that these sounds may have significance in communication between neighboring groups of monkeys. The appearance of such a ritual may also be largely accidental. One male during a demonstration of his strength could grab a stone and throw it into a tree to enhance the effect. It is assumed that the sight of a pile of stones or rocks provokes a desire in monkeys to repeat the behavior of their relative. Well, of course, uh, the media could not but promote such an exciting topic to sensational news, according to the scientists, about the appearance of rudiments of religion in chimpanzees. However, to scientists, there are no clear prerequisites for such conclusions. Uh, the research will continue and already with the participation of archaeologists. It is known that our ancestors, as in fact the ancient representatives of our species Homo sapiens, actively used structures made of stones that carried different functions. For example, pyramids of stones that tourists of all stripes like to build in mountainous areas were previously used to mark the path and for orientation. There existed and still exist uh, religion, uh, the religious stone objects. For example, the Sami sages. Please see my Kola Peninsula videos, and you, you will know what I'm talking about. Very interesting, by the way. Uh, very unusual piece of territory, and the things that go on there, and the expeditions. You'll see it. In general, this is a very interesting topic, and I hope one day that we'll know for sure why chimpanzees throw stones at trees. But another interesting development took place in 2011. A study by a group of scientists was published in the journal PLOS ONE, or, sounds like PLOS ONE, but it's not. It says that many chimpanzees who are kept in captivity have cases of strange behavior. For example, some monkeys injured themselves. Others circled around for a long time and showed other symptoms common in people with mental illnesses. And the reason is not the conditions of keeping the animals. They say that they are poorly cared for. Strange behavior has been observed even in chimpanzees living in very good zoos. Um, but you know, you, you cannot really attribute it to anything. Deviant, that is, abnormal behavior is observed only in animals that are kept in captivity, said researchers Nicholas Newton Fisher from the University of Kent Anthropology. We believe that these symptoms are a sign of mental disorder, which is obviously a consequence of being kept in ca captivity. Dr. Newton Fisher and his colleague Lucy Burkett observed 40 individuals living in six American and English zoos, as well as wild chimpanzees in Uganda. And those monkeys who live in captivity periodically behave strangely. They beat their heads against walls, pulled out their fur, wild, wild monkeys never did anything like that. All the crazy monkeys were kept in almost ideal conditions. Several individuals in an aviary with conditions as close to natural as possible and regular healthy nutrition was given to them. Um, um, previously, scientists believed that improving the conditions of keeping chimpanzees would be able to extinguish the strange antics. But now scientists believe that the cell itself acts depressingly on these intelligent and highly developed monkeys. Um, I lived and worked in East Africa where I observed chimpanzees living in the wild, said Dr. Newton Fisher, and now, frankly, it's quite hard for me to look at these animals planted in cages. Uh, Sue Savage Rumbach from the Great Ape Trust Primate Protection Foundation said that zookeepers need to take better care of monkeys, not only about their physical health, but also about their mental health. It is not yet clear how this can be done, but methods of treating mentally ill monkeys will certainly become the topic of further research by scientists. Well, 10 years later, something else amazed scientists. Scientists were frightened by the cruel behavior of chimpanzees in the wild. Tobias Deschner, a researcher at the Max 
Planck Institute tried to figure out the reasons. In his opinion, the joint use of food resources by gorillas, chimpanzees, and forest elephants could lead to increased competition between species and to cases with deadly interactions. Um, our observations provide the first evidence that the presence of chimpanzees can be fatal for gorillas. Now we want to investigate the factors causing this surprisingly aggressive interaction, said Deschner. The first case of a collision between two species of monkeys occurred in 2019 when chimpanzees organized an attack on a group of gorillas, killing two cubs. The next meeting of the two species of monkeys also resulted in the death of a baby gorilla, which was almost completely eaten by a female chimpanzee. Uh, our research shows that we still have a lot to learn and learn about our closest living relatives, said Tobias Deschner. According to the scientists, they plan to continue to observe the interaction between chimpanzees and gorillas, as well as to study the impact of competition on the behavior of the two species. I had a few adventures in Africa decades ago. I did my field research, and I know a few things about the baboons, and uh, I will share them with you so you can see that scientists don't know everything and or don't always know where to look and we have to look for ourselves baboons are very unusual animals and um, i will relate to what i know and what i've heard from other people and also to research uh, that was conducted by somebody i really respect who knew uh, africa as very few people did but that will be in my future videos. Um, I thank you for your attention to my work. If you can support me, uh, my research, you can see the links in the description to this video. Please like my video and subscribe to the channel.